folks, Jason Peacock here, back with another review. Today I'm talking about Nemesis from one of the hottest companies in board games right now, Awaken Realms. Now what I have set up here is what is going to be in the retail edition. This was a Kickstarter I got, but all the extra stuff and, and expansions will be coming later on in the year. So everything you see here when this is released in store should be what you are getting in the box. I'm going to say this because you can't talk about this game without making the comparison. This is essentially Aliens the movie in a box, so to speak. I'm not the only one that's going to say that, and that's not a bad thing. That's just an ode. I mean, I do a side-by-side -side comparison with this in a Xenomorph from uh, Aliens vs. Predator game I have. You can tell where the uh, art inspiration came from. Now what this game is, is a competitive game. Now there is a co-op, full co-op version that I will speak about as well, but that's in the variant section, so the heart of this game, the way the designers want it, is a competitive game. It's a very mean game. All the players, they wake up in the uh, the cryo sleep chamber and one of the cryo chambers has a smashed glass and there is a dead body in it that's how it starts off now because everyone woke up early their memory is foggy so they're not sure what the arrangement on the ship is you're gonna get two objective cards at the start of the game one of these is a corporate objective card another one is a personal one when the first Xenomorph shows up on the ship, you've got a f at least a few turns before any show up to go around and do some exploring. The queen here. Then you have to pick one of those two objectives. And these objectives can range in a proper barrier. Send the signal and finish the game in an escape pod or hibernation with the blue character corpse object. Right? So that objective is just accomplishing your own thing but the corporate objective is going to be something like be the last survivor left alive or kill the you know uh player two something like that so although you can't directly attack each other you can still do things like seal all the doors and start a fire in a room and other characters in um so tell you what, let me jump in and explain the mechanics of the game here and the setup, and then I'll go more into detail about what I'm talking about now. Now there's um, the board state currently in, say, the middle of a game. Now normally there's not going to be aliens on the map there, but they do look cooler there. So on the map there's a series of these room tiles here. Some of them are level 1. And all of the level 1s are used every game. They are essential buildings uh, that you're going to need to accomplish uh, a game. Like, there's just some actions that have to be available every game. And then you're going to have the level 2 buildings. Now, these are the interior ones. And there you're going to get some of them every game, and there's going to be a few left out. And all of these buildings start face down with these exploration tokens on them. So, like I said, these characters start off with a foggy memory. They don't know, remember the layout of the ship. That's why you don't find out until you move into a room. This is where the characters start. All right, so you're gonna get a series of actions every round. Now, each character has their own deck of cards, their action deck. So if you look over, you can see that these are for the mechanic. Now, there are some cards that everybody has, like a search card, um, one that might open doors, and then they're going to have some specialty cards that allow them to do, like, um, something thematic to their trade, the mechanic, the pilot. There's six to choose from. Now, you're going to have a maximum of five actions you can do in a round because everything you do is going to involve getting rid of cards now this symbol right here 
means you have to discard any one card from your hand to do that action. You can take a look at your player board. The basic actions available to everyone that'll require discarding a card. So if I wanted to move from one spot to another, I would have to get rid of a card. Shooting, melee attack, picking up a heavy object, trading, craft item, and a careful movement lets you manipulate where these noise tokens go. And I'll tell you, this here is if you get some items, you can craft them together to make a few things that might help you out of a tricky situation. And then the other thing you can do is do the action of the cards in your hand. All right, so if I wanted to do this, I would play this card and then play another, any other one card from my hand. And these will give you the list of actions. So you can do up to two on your turn. If you don't want to do something, if you don't want, just say you just want to do one, then you basically pass for the rest of the game, uh, game round. Now, if you do two actions, then it's the other person's turn. If they do two actions, it goes back to the next person or, or back to whoever if it's a two-player game. So that's kind of the flow of the game. Now, when a guy's moving around, say this guy does a move action. All right, this has been unexplored. I do a move action. I'll go here. I flip them. All right, now this is very interesting. There, you're going to flip this exploration token. There's going to be a number. That's basically going to tell you how many items are in this room, how many times it can be searched. So I would line the two up with the arrow. And then you would look at this symbol here. It means put a door token on any one of the hallways connected to it. Okay. Now how the noise dice works is that basically every time you move, you have to place noise, these yellow tokens here. They're very good quality. Now there is a noise dice right here, this guy. So you would roll the dice. If I rolled a one, I would have to put a noise in a number one corridor. Now that's all fine if it's the only noise token, but if I moved again to here and I rolled a one again, as soon as you have duplicate noise tokens in a corridor, that's when you spawn um, a possible intruder. You would draw from a bag, see what the token is, and then you've got intruders on the board. And they're tough and they can kill you quite easily. So you're gonna wanna go around finding weapons and gear to keep you alive while accomplishing your objectives. So how do you win at this game? Well, not only do you have to accomplish your objective, but if you have to make it to Earth, then one random card will tell you where the coordinates. It always starts out on B. So right now this ship is headed to Mars. So if someone, you'd have to do an action in this room, right? There's room actions as well. So toss away two cards. All the room actions are two cards. Uh, you can see right there, like two actions in the monitoring room lets you check one room and exploration token. So you're kind of looking remotely through computers. All the rooms will have a room action. They'll let you do things like open the escape pod hatch, change the coordinates on the ship. So just say one guy wanted to go to Mars. He comes to the cockpit here, uses a room action to look at the coordinates, doesn't tell the other players. He's like, oh good, okay, we're going to Earth. So if anyone did not have an objective to end up anywhere but Earth, there's two ways to get to Earth. Um, either the ship engines are intact, which means two of the three piles of these engine tokens, you have a damage and a working. The working one has to be on the top of the deck, so two out of the three of those have to be working. And again, someone can check those. When you go to those rooms, you can either break or repair an engine, so other players don't quite know what you're doing. So even if, if two of those engines were damaged and you uh, were taking this ship, to Earth, it would blow up because the engines are damaged. You could escape in an escape pod though, right? But first you have to unlock that escape pod and you have to accomplish your objectives. And once you're on your way home, either you're hibernating here, because if you're not hibernating when the ship goes into hyperspace, then the G-force rips you apart. So that could also kill you. Now, when you are on your way home, just say you accomplish your objective, you gotta make sure you don't have an alien that's gonna burst out of your chest. 
So you have these contamination cards over here that look just like your action cards. And you've got this code reader. So contamination cards end up plugging up your deck through different alien attacks. All right. So there's ways to look at it. If you can go to the surgery room if you happen to have an infected one in you. And if you ever have two infected cards, then you are... See, you can see this doesn't say infected. So he would actually be okay if this was the only card in his deck. But despite having to survive, accomplishing your objective, and making sure the ship gets home alive, making sure other players don't kill you, you also have to make sure an alien is not gonna burst out of your chest. Now just to touch on what some of the rooms can do, uh, one thing the game does that's great is it gives you a sheet of all the different rooms. So you can do things like recharge your gun, send a signal, which is something that is in a lot of the win objectives, emergency rooms, healing up, evacuation section, let's get into an escape pod, fire control system, um, lets you put out fires, which could happen, um, especially like through these exploration tokens that we uh, looked at here. These things that'll start on all the rooms. And of course, after all the action phases are done, you're gonna have the event phase. So this can add things like fire. This is gonna tell you what type of intruders are gonna activate that round. So if you look over on the intruder board here, and there's like weaknesses you can uncover to make fighting the aliens easier. I'm not gonna get into all that, this isn't a ru rules explanation video. This is a get a feel for how the game plays video. But these ones here are in every game. The, you just need them for everything. You, you're gonna have a nest, you're gonna have storage, surgery, and then you've got your special rooms that are printed on the board, and these additional rooms. So some of these will be used every game and some of them won't. But these are gonna let you do things your action cards will give you things. You've got your basic actions. There's a lot of things to do while going around this ship. You're gonna have to work together to a certain degree. You're gonna have to try and trust each other a little. But, fire tokens right here. All right, so you're walking around um, if you go to a room with another player, you don't have to roll for noise. So traveling together could be beneficial. But there's no way to remove noise. So it's just a matter of time before you get two in the same hallway and intruders start to spawn. And the when the first one comes on the board, that's when you have to pick one of your two objectives. Uh, when the first player dies, the uh, escape pods automatically open. Uh, sometimes the uh, self-destruct sequence gets set. Soon as it crosses there, there's no reversing it. The whole ship's gonna blow up in three more rounds. So you better be in an escape pod ready to get out. And then of course you have the uh, game timer. So every round, this will move further and further along. Uh, when you get to the end, the ship goes into hyperspace. If two of the three engines aren't working, the whole ship blows apart, everyone on board dies. When you cross that blue space, the hibernation chambers enter, so it is possible to jump in there. Then you're essentially out of the game until the ship either, if it blows up and you're in the hyperspace chamber, well, too bad for you. Um, if you're the last person alive and you go in a hyperspace chamber, that'll kind of end the game. But you're kind of safe once you get in there and go to sleep. You just got to hope the ship goes to Earth and doesn't blow up and you don't have any aliens in your body. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's an intruder phase. You're going to draw tokens from this bag and they could spawn intruders on the board. They could make you add other tokens to the bag. You know, you've got different levels of intruders, larvas, creepers, adults, breeders, and finally the queen. Here's a look at some of the minis. There's the queen. These are the regular intruders and there's two poses. You've got the breeders here. More intruders. And there's some creepers around as well, right here. Some creepers right there. Three of those guys. 
exploration tokens, door tokens. There's a little card holder here to uh, keep your stuff in. Uh, there are item decks with lots of variety of stuff. Um, so the color of room that you search will determine the color of item deck you draw from. So you've got your medical supplies, your weapons, and then your gadgets. Um, your guys can take a certain amount of wounds before they die. If you get three light wounds and you end up with a serious wound, you would draw one of those cards. Coming back to the player board here. You keep track of conditions here. If you send the signal, you would mark it. Every third light wound would give you a serious wound. This can be a leg wound, which would slow you down. Uh, now you can bandage and, and fix wounds, but if you take three, your third serious wound will kill you dead. You find ammo, and then you also have to spend ammo when you use it. So this game's kind of like Resident Evil, the video game, at least the earlier ones, where ammo was so precious, so use it wisely. And I think that's kind of a good gist of how the game plays. Um, oh, I mentioned fire. There's no, eight fire tokens. If you ever have to place a ninth one, the ship blows up, you're dead. So everyone has to put out fires. Um, same thing with these malfunction tokens. Something can malfunction a room. Um, you can never have more than one token in a place. And then you can no longer use that room action. And if you have to place your ninth one, ship blows up, everybody dies that's on board. Now you could have escaped through uh, escape pod by then, but you'd have to play the game to find out. All right, so Nemesis. This is a game I'm gonna talk about sitting beside the fire. Nemesis is a game with so much atmosphere. It's possibly the most thematic game I've ever played and some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. Now I love the game, but let me talk about why this game is not for everyone. First of all, this game has player elimination. When you're playing the uh, the semi co-op mode, the competitive mode. Theoretically, you could get killed early on in the game, and then uh, the first one that gets killed would take on the role of the aliens, which is cool. But typically, when players are getting killed, the end of the game isn't too far away. Another thing about this game is that there is a lot of randomness. Randomness with uh, the noise rolls, randomness with the event cards, um, with the aliens. However, it's not so unlike the randomness in, say, Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. But your best laid plans, your most strategic thinking could all be for nothing based on random things that happen. So let me elaborate. Um, I was playing a game with a group and we drew an event card and it said that uh, you have to put a fire token next to every room that's already on fire. So just like that, our ninth fire token had to be placed, we didn't have it, boom, shit blew up, everybody died. It's also a, a long game. This game uh, is probably around the three hour mark and it's a bit uh, of a setup. It's not uh, the longest game to set up, but you've got to flip, got to get all the room tiles, there's lots of tokens. Another negative thing is that um, your objectives. There's objectives that you typically going to get one that's going to involve killing all the other players, another player, or doing something else. Some of the objectives are easier to accomplish than others. You do have your choice of two though. And also, um, you've got these nice player aids for all the rooms, which is great, but they should have put a rules reference in there with all the different stages of the event phase, what happens when an invader attacks you. I was constantly flipping in the rule book the first couple of games. And I would rather one room tile and, and another rule synopsis rather than two room tiles and no rule synopsis. Now, let me get into what I really like about the game. This is the kind of game you're playing for the experience, for the story. The beginning of the rulebook has this 
narration of all these things happening aboard a ship, like a short story, and all of these things that happen are just based on one game experience. This game tells a story like nothing else. The mechanics fit the theme unlike any other game. It's really quite the feat in design that way. It's also captures the claustrophobic atmosphere of being on board an alien ship and you wake up, your memory is a bit fuzzy, you wake up from uh, cryo sleep and you don't quite remember where everything is, you're groggy. That's why all the room tiles start face down and you have to explore the ship a little bit. This is one of the most cinematic and thematic gaming experiences of my life. This game is incredible at capturing that claustrophobic feeling, being on a board a ship with aliens lurking in the quarters, the noise mechanic. It's not the noise you're making, it's the noise of these aliens in the distance down the hallways. The game also escalates really good. The first you know, quarter of the game, it's actually pretty relaxed and you have time to get out, find some stuff, do some exploring, work on your objectives. And when that invader first appears, and they will, it escalates at a nice rate and by the time you're getting close to getting your objective, everything has gone pear-shaped. There's fires everywhere, there's things malfunctioning, you're being chased by aliens. But this is a game that I was thinking about for days later after playing with my brother and a couple of friends. And it's, you could write a novel or a short story based on our game. And no two games are ever going to be the same. Now my brother had an objective to make sure that the ship gets destroyed and then he escapes on an escape pod. The whole game, he was pretending like he was this good guy. He's asking me to go over and make sure the engines are working. Meanwhile, he didn't care if the engines were working. He just made me waste time. And the way you can role play out your characters and, and take on these roles is adds just a whole other depth to this game. The combat is pretty cool. The way your, your ammo is limited, it's got that, you know... I think back to the video game Resident Evil 1 where ammo was precious and if you're going to shoot something you better make sure you hit. The game can be brutal. It can really be brutal. Like I mentioned a event card coming up. I was one turn away from getting in my escape pod with the queen's egg and getting a win in but this event happened. Fires broke out everywhere, but we weren't containing the fires. We were just kind of ignoring them, so a li it's a little bit our bad. I know the next time I play, I'm definitely going to spend more time just getting some items that are going to help you later in the game, and I'm going to concentrate more on putting out fires rather than ignoring them. So yeah, it was a random event that just abruptly ended the game, but it's kind of our fault we let things get to that point. Now one of the criticisms of this game is it's a bit fiddly, there's a lot of rules and stuff. But that completely goes away after a game or two. In fact, everything makes sense and the, the mechanics of the game are very simplified. Everything you want to do costs an action. A room costs, doing something in a room costs an action. You've got the handy sheet telling you what uh, each room does. Anything you want to move, you want to shoot, you want to use an item, you want to pick something up, it's all in action and it's all going to involve tossing away cards in your hand to do. As far as the components go for this game, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. This is, this is a deluxe version of a game and it's just the regular version, but that is how Awakened Realms rolls. They are all about giving you a completely beautiful deluxe package. I absolutely love this game. It's unlike any other gaming experience I've had. I would I would make it akin to something like Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. You know, the, the emphasis is on the story, it's on the experience, and not so much on, on winning. I mean, with Mansions of Madness, I assume that I'm going to lose, and winning would be a pleasant surprise. But this game is my... Aliens board game. I mean, I've got Aliens vs. Predator, which is cool, but there's just something about this. You play with the right group of people. It's an amazingly 
fun, good time. Now I mentioned I was going to talk about the solo mode. Um, sorry, not the solo mode, but the cooperative mode. And for those that don't like the, the personal objectives uh, that are about screwing the other people over, the co-op mode is actually great because there is no player elimination. If you die, you can drag that dead person's body back to the resurrection chamber and bring them back to life. But my group just likes playing the cutthroat version, and that's how the designers intended it. The, uh, you know, getting infected, the, the little card reader, the fires breaking out on the ship, the um, having to make sure the coordinates are going to Earth, or you get in an escape pod, or you hibernate, all these things come together in a wonderful package. So two enthusiastic thumbs up for Nemesis from me. However, not for everyone. It's not going to be for gamers that uh, want, if they play good, if they're strategic, they want to win. That might not happen in this one. This is a game you're playing for the story, for the experience. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.